Hey guys, so after two months of painting and fixing holes and walls and setting up a home network, I am finally operational. There's still a lot of things for me to do. I still have to complete my home network and I still have to adjust this recording setup and improve acoustics and lighting and replace tripods with clamps and different things. But at this point, I can start to produce YouTube videos on a regular basis. Yay! So there was a few things that kind of held me back from doing that. First one being that I hadn't selected a desk, but I've picked up this IKEA desk here. Seems to be doing the job. But the main thing holding me back was the lack of an internet connection. I had ordered the BT internet package a couple of months ago and the saying that they dragged their feet a little would be an understatement. But I was relying on my mobile phone's mobile hotspot connection in the meantime for everything, for Netflix for email, for everything really. And that was a problem because I don't really get a good signal in this home. But I'm connected now. I am now connected to B BT's Fiber 900 package. So I wanted to do a video about it to basically explain how it's all set up, talk about my experience and hopefully give some feedback to anyone who's considering buying this. So this is BT Fiber 900, meet the next generation of fiber broadband, speeds of up to 900 megabits per second. So you can see here fiber all the way to your door. So this is a simplified diagram showing you how this is set up. But basically if you're you're with a BT uh, internet connection here in the UK or you know through Sky or whatever, previously your internet was provided via a copper line, the old telephone line, but now they're rolling out fiber, which I don't want to get too technical about it, but fiber is so much more um, effective than copper as far as the distances it can travel, the bandwidth, the latency, everything's faster, there's just more room. And this is a standard that we'll be using for the next 15, 20 years or whatever. And you can see through this diagram that previously the fiber connection, which was in place, would go to the local street cabinet and then, a, you know, like someone from open reach would go in and then change the cables around f for your house and then send that down the copper line, the telephone line, to your house. And if you're using that just now, you probably have something that's got, it's called a micro filter that's got a telephone line and uh, uh, an ethernet cable in one. But now, as you can see, with a fiber connection, it goes from the local BT exchange, there's a fiber cable and it goes directly to your house. And that's what I've got. So the cable comes from the BT local exchange and it comes to the house, but it goes into a box and within that box, effectively all that's happening is that you've got two cables spliced together. Uh, together. You've got the fiber cable that comes from BT and then there's another fiber cable that runs from that box, spliced together, and then it runs into your house. And once it's into your house, it will go to a modem. Now I've got a Huawei modem, that's what they gave me. And I've, I've attached a little accessory so that I can take it on and off easily because I'd rather have that than something that was drilled into the wall. Now, instead of connecting directly from the modem to the Smart Hub 2, which is BT's all-in-one modem router and deck phone adapter, I have went through my home network and connected to the Smart Hub 2 at the other end. So effectively the same setup as most people, I'm just kind of going through my home network, but I get literally the exact same speeds, you know, upload and download speeds. Now, with that actual setup, everything works great as far as the connection goes, and it works great with my home network that I've been setting up, in so much as I get the same latency and speeds at the top of the house as I do at the bottom when I'm using uh, an ethernet connection. But there's a few things I don't like about it. First thing, you know, kind of going off topic a little bit, but BT are one of the worst companies I've ever dealt with. Over the last two months, I've had so many complaints and, you know, ongoing phone calls and lies. And, you know, there's a lot of times when I was on the phone for like several hours, like basically all day. And then people would hang up the phone or people would say, sorry, this isn't the right department. Or they would say, I'll phone you back. And then they don't. And then they'll just lie to you. And another thing is, Everyone just keeps saying, I'm not an engineer, I'm not technical when you're talking about anything. Like no one at BT knows anything about the products. So that's a frustrating uh, element of it. But there's a few things that I don't like about it as well. Now I'm not gonna show you my admin area obviously because that's got sensitive information. But when you get their Smart Hub 2 hub, um, you will access it through this, which is the hub manager. And this is an example of what you will see as the homepage of it. and. 
you know, it's quite nice and friendly and all that as far as, you know, it's user friendly for non-technical users, but it, it kind of annoys me that they've, they've, the way that they've set it up, they've left out all these advanced settings, which could be very useful from a security point of view. And yet you've got this big box here for hub light control. Like who cares about the, the brightness of the light? Just put a sticker over it. It's just frustrating. So from the, the hub point of view, that it is very, very restrictive as to what you can do. Um, you know, there's 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 no virtual lands and things like that from a security point of view. There's another thing, uh, you know, that I wasn't aware of this feature, but BT have got a feature called BT Wi-Fi. And on paper, it sounds good. The idea being that all BT customers share their wireless connection so that, you know, you're traveling and you can't get a connection. You can go through someone else's uh, router and you go through their internet connection. But I have a major problem with that altogether because firstly is that they opted you into this BT Wi-Fi connection without even telling you. The second one being that you could pay for the fastest connection, but that means that anyone walking by not only can use your upload and download, your bandwidth, but they can also access your home network if they know what they're doing. It's a major security flaw, and I really don't like the fact that it was you know, set up by default. And talking about security, the one thing I really don't like about this is the wireless setup. I mean, I, I mean, like most of you have been using the internet for years, and even routers from years ago would allow you to split the channels, or they allow you to, you know, set, set up different uh, like guest channels and things like that. But they don't let, allow you to do that here. You can set up a 2.4 gigahertz channel or a 5 gigahertz channel or one that does both, but you can't separate them. You cannot create separate channels. It has to be either one that does 2.4 and 5, or it has to be 2.4 or 5 separately. And that's very frustrating. So for those of you who don't know, that you know, the main channels that you get are 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. 2.4 has got the longer range, which is why smart devices use them. But you're kind of limited to about, normally about 300 megabits, maybe 500 megabits per second. Five gigahertz will give you faster speeds, better latency, and it's just a better connection, but it doesn't really penetrate walls as well. So you're not going to get that distance that you want. And this is why you get a lot of kind of mesh setups now. They've got different uh, uh, access points around the house that will give you the five gigahertz connection. So, the frustrating thing about not being able to split the channels is that if you get a, a BT connection, a BT package, and you're going through one of their uh, hubs, because you can't split the channels, some smart devices won't work. For example, I've got LED lights and smart bulbs that won't work because these channels, the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz channels cannot be split. So if you've got an all-in-one channel, it won't work. You need to have a separate channel. And that's quite frustrating, but also from a security point of view, it is important to split those channels because ideally you want all smart devices on a separate channel that's kind of protected behind a firewall or a virtual LAN. So that's a little bit frustrating as well. So the hub manager is very basic, but again, these complaints, I could probably level this in most ISPs, most internet service providers in the UK because they provide you a user-friendly but very basic all-in-one system that's a modem and a router and lots of other things. Now, obviously, because I've got this fiber connection, the, I'm not using the modem and the, the BT uh, hub, the BT Smart Hub too, but it does work as a, 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 a modem as well if you hook it up to a copper line. So it does have a modem in there. Now, when you get a BT connection, you get phones. And now all phones that come from BT are decked phones, digital phones. But what they don't tell you when you're signing up is that these phones have to go through the Smart Hub too. Now that is a problem because what it means is that when you replace this router, this all-in-one router modem hub thing, when you replace it because the range isn't as good as you want it to be or anything like that, and it isn't, by the way, that's the one thing I'll say, the range isn't great. Uh, as far as speeds, once you go like up a floor or two, the speeds really drop. But when you want to replace it and you replace it with a better router, then your phones will no longer work because they only work with the smart hub. So that's a little bit frustrating. I have raised this with them and they are trying to resolve it. I think I can put the phones, older phones through a copper connection, but be aware that if you opt for a BT package, your phones have to go through the smart hub. And when you replace the smart hub, because the range isn't good and because you know it's just not a good router, then your phones will stop working and you won't need to have a different setup. That's something you should definitely bring up with BT. So these are all things that I need to get resolved. But 
All of those negatives aside, bad customer service, a very basic user interface has got no uh, options, it's got very little advanced settings and isn't really secure in my opinion. The one thing it is good at, speed. And that's the most important thing. So, I wanna show you the internet speed. Now, I've actually did a few takes of this video because I didn't realize that this app, speed test app, does not seem to be working correctly. So, I'm gonna do the speed test. Now, the download speed here is fairly accurate. It's telling you the correct download speed that I'm getting. Um, it's normally about 900 megabits, it goes up and down, but yeah, I mean, you can see my download speed there. But the upload speed, for whatever reason, speed test does not seem to be giving me the correct speed test, uh, the correct upload. So one minute it will say four or 10 megabits per second. You know, look at that there. That makes it look like the connection is terrible. And I was honestly alarmed when I saw that, but that's actually not true. So if I jump back over to my browser, you will see that I do get better connection speeds than that. Now, the download speed, if you look through fast.com, again, it's the same story, like 900 megabits per second, etc. cetera. Um, but if I use Google's speed test here, this is, well, it appears to be enemy. It, it appears to be uh, more reliable as far as what actually you're getting as far as upload speeds. I've got no idea why speed test uh, is not working as far as uploads goes. So you can see there at the moment, I am getting 582 download, upload 71. So run that test again. You can see fast is saying 980 megabits per second, but really anything between the 500 to 1000 megabits per second, you know, kind of range, I am extremely happy from a download point of view. But as I pointed out at the start of this video, I am a YouTuber. Cheesy as it is, I am a YouTuber, and what that means is the download speed is important to me for various reasons, for downloading files and, you know, different things like that, but upload speed is arguably more important for me because I'm uploading 4K videos, and if I'm doing a live stream, I want to have a connection that's, I mean, look at that. I don't, I don't know how accurate that is, by the way. I don't know how accurate that is. But yes, back on topic, I want an, uh, an upload speed that is, you know, consistent, that's what I want. I want something that, you know, I would rather have something that was consistently 50 megabit upload than say something that was 10 one minute and 100 the next. But upload speeds, I do seem to be getting, sometimes it's 90, sometimes it's 98, but it does drop down sometimes. But you can see there that it is dropping. And this is something that I'll need to keep track of. Now, it is a peak time just now. Um, so I don't know, I'll run that again. But on the whole, I will say I have been happy with their internet connection. I, I will say that despite the complaints, despite the fact that, you know, their hub is quite basic, etc. Yeah, that's, that's a back to normal. I mean, look at those speeds, 737, uh, yeah, 736 megabits per second download, 86 upload. And, and I'm seeing that time and time again. I don't know why uh, that other app isn't working right, but it, it does seem to be very consistent with the speed. So despite all the problems with BT, despite everything that I've had to deal with them, if I'm getting these speeds at the end of it, I'm hoping that it's all worth it. So what it means for me is that from my work point of view, it's going to make it quicker for me to upload YouTube videos, but it means that I can also stream live at a higher a, you know, resolution. I could perhaps stream at 4K or rent. I'm not saying I'm going to do that, but I, I do have options and it's going to reduce the amount of time that I, um, you know, spend up, spend time uploading videos. Just from a general internet usage point of view, though, it does mean that I can be uploading videos. I could be playing games at the same time. And, you know, my wife can be doing, you know, she could be on Netflix or she can be accessing a computer on a Zoom call. And we can do all of this at once and, there's enough bandwidth to go around for basically everyone in the house. So despite the bad customer service, despite the fact that I'm going to have to work out a different situation with our phones because I, I am going to replace the router. And I don't I don't want to be too um I don't want to be too harsh about their hub because I mean it does the job for 99% of people. I just for me it's a little bit basic and I want more options and I don't like the fact that I can't split channels and stuff. But I think for most people, they will be happy with it. And I will say about the Smart Hub is, it is very easy to use. It's not too ugly per se. 
and it has been reliable. I've not had anything switching off. Um, if it doesn't seem to affect latency or anything like that. I'm using it right now. What I will say about it, uh, though, is that the range of the Smart Hub is not amazing, which is perhaps why BT offered discs to anyone who's got a bad connection. But what I've bought is I've bought a TP-Link, uh, well, it's a range extender and an access point, but rather than use it as simply something that um, you know boosts the sing signal, I've run it through my home network and I've set up as a separate uh, access point with, you can see it there, that's the upload, with um, the existing Ethernet connection. So what I'm using, I'm using a separate um, device, which is I'm using as a separate access point, but I'm just mimicking the same channel as BT and I'm getting much, much faster internet download and upload speeds wherever I am in the house. I am going to be changing all of this though. I'm going to be putting in access points and improving things. I'm going to be improving things even further. But what I will say is that, yes, BT Fiber is the real deal. Once you go through their bad customer service and get everything set up, you will get extremely fast speeds. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is certainly not the end of the story for me as far as my home network goes. There's a lot of things I'm going to do to streamline things, to improve the network, to improve Wi-Fi times and set up backups and different things. But I hope you've enjoyed the videos. It is very good to be back and I hope you're all doing very well. So until next time, guys, take care.